who remembers their grade 7 health class. In rolls the TV, down go the blinds, and the teacher puts in a VHS not of everyone's favorite green ogre, but one of these fossils. Alcohol, the silent killer. Here's little Billy before he snuck a sip of father's brandy. Here's little Billy a month later. Bad, bad Billy. So remember, unless you want to go from a four-point GPA to six feet under, don't drink alcohol. <laughs> Despite the uh, best efforts of those grade seven health classes, about 28% of Canadians ages 18 to 34 are considered to be heavy drinkers. That means they consume at least five drinks per occasion, one or more times per month. Peer pressure, stress, depression, there are many factors that might drive someone to drink in excess, and in the jumble of day-to-day -day life, that one over-the-counter cure-all might feel like just the thing to help you finally unwind. Alright, I know how this sounds so far, but this isn't another Grade 7 public service announcement on the dangers of alcohol, I, I promise. We're going a little deeper. In fact, we're going to climb down and take a walk through the garden. This is your digestive system, and like a garden, it hosts a complex ecosystem of microorganisms known to health scientists as your microbiome. Everyone's microbiome is different, with different species and numbers of individuals totaling in the tens of trillions. Certain microbes that live in your microbiota are considered beneficial. You might already know these as probiotics, which exist in small populations in capsule form or naturally in fermented foods like yogurt and kimchi. Bacterial strains like lactobacilli and bifidobacterium are considered good bacteria that not only aid in digestion, but stimulate the vagus nerve, which runs from your gut up to your brain. By interacting with the vagus nerve and, in turn, your brain, microorganisms help regulate many of your body's normal functions such as sleep cycles, immune system, and even brain health. They also take up a large amount of space in your gut garden, leaving less room for neutral or downright harmful microorganisms to grow. But like all ecosystems, the gut microbiome is in delicate balance. And it can be very easily thrown into chaos or dysbiosis. Antibiotics, certain medications, processed foods, things high in salt, fats, or sugar, and yes, alcohol, can kill beneficial microorganisms and leave bad ones, known as pathogens, the opportunity to grow and compete with the good microbes. With fewer beneficial microbes in your gut, all those processes they helped regulate, sleep, immunity, brain health, take a hit. And speaking of the immune system, it's already reacting to the growing population of bad microbes with a natural process called inflammation. Inflammation is key to fighting off infections and healing injury, but if a body part remains inflamed for a long time, it can cause serious problems. A chronically inflamed digestive system can lead to complications like IBS, depression, heart disease, and cancer. Worse yet, it's a self-perpetuating cycle. Dysbiosis can trigger stress, which leaves you more susceptible to cravings. A poor diet, and in our case, overconsumption of alcohol, will continue to throw your gut even further off balance, which leads to more stress, which leads to more unhealthy habits, which leads to an even less balanced gut, which leads to more stress, etc., etc. This cycle of dysbiosis can be slow and subtle enough to make its way into your daily routine with little notice, just as with excessive drinking. After all, What's a get-together without beer pong? A few glasses of wine this evening, just to relax. Oh, uh, a nip during work to get through a long day? Eventually, you or someone you know is going to notice something is wrong. You might have gained weight, developed stomach and sleeping problems, your mood has changed, and not just because you're between drinks or already beak deep into one. Even if you don't notice anything is wrong, you might end up deciding on your own to cut down. But what you might not realize is that some parts of your brain may have already been directly affected by dysbiosis, including the parts that control impulsive decisions. Remember, your brain isn't getting those regular signals from your good gut microbes, and it's under stress from your immune response. Your personality is quite literally being altered, and your ability to exercise willpower is being negatively impacted. It's important to realize that falling off the wagon is a normal part of recovery and is nothing to be ashamed of. Progress isn't lost, and it isn't all for nothing. Consider it a practice run. Keep going and adjust your sobriety plan if needed. You can and deserve to get better, no matter how mild or severe the addiction. And there is good news. The ways you can help rebalance your gut rarely conflict with common treatment practices and programs, and you can start them on your own. Yes, it's the holy trinity of health. 
good eating, good exercise, and staying social. Okay, that's enough of that. We've all heard that well-meaning advice before, from family, friends, teachers, doctors, strangers. And sure, it's true. Just look at this cheerful picture. Going to the gym always makes me feel great. Have you tried CrossFit? Why don't you spend time with all your friends and family? Hanging out is a great way to cure all your problems. I mean, have you tried eating a little healthier? You are what you eat. Just call me a kale salad. <sighs> Sorry. The advice is well-meaning, and it really does positively impact your body and recovery, but to most people who find themselves in that pit, it can feel more like a... Yeah. It might help to try separating truth from the unhelpful, and the truth is that good eating, exercise, and staying social are really important to both fixing and maintaining good gut health, and you can start any of these practices in your own time, in any order, and at your own pace. It will, however, feel like a full-time job, or a marathon, but it does get easier. Staying social with friends or a support group helps keep you accountable and lower stress, taking pressure off your system and helping to break the cycle of dysbiosis. You can ease yourself into more social activities by starting with solitary walks, just to touch base with the world around you. Exercise, along with its usual benefits, stimulates the vagus nerve and the brain in a similar way a healthy microbiota does. You might start by including stretching or even simple breathing exercises into your morning or evening routine. Some have found success using phone apps to remind them when to be active and to track progress. Good nutrition feeds and strengthens not only you, but the hard-working beneficial microbes in your gut. Cut down on drinking as much as you can, reduce your intake of refined sugars and junk foods which don't carry a lot of nutrition for you but are well-loved by bad microorganisms. You may look online for healthy recipes with prebiotic foods, which good microflora love to eat. If you can, consider speaking to a reputable dietitian or compounding pharmacist in your area. Along with helping you make a healthy meal plan, they might be able to prescribe and compound a probiotic supplement, usually as capsules or a powder, to kickstart your unique gut microbiota, a common reason that many of the mass-marketed probiotic supplements don't work or even cause stomach upset is that they may not have enough of or the right kind of microorganisms. If you aren't able to speak to a licensed dietitian or compounding pharmacist, don't worry. Though it might take a little longer, you can make the journey with what you already have. Thank you.